March 23rd, 1993, 8.15 p.m. 21 miners are going down in the elevator tenderly named Mary Ann, preparing for their night shift. The ride goes smoothly until, all of a sudden, the floor starts shaking and the cage stops. Men throw glances at each other. Rassi hey. Erasmus, the older, silver-haired miner, tells the rest not to worry. Mary Ann would start moving soon. Mario Cockrell, his younger colleague, wasn't that optimistic, though. Did he just huh? not hear some strange sound? As if, oh no, the massive steel wire rope was piling up on the elevator cage roof, right above their heads, and the winch that lowered the cage. Wait, why is it still running? Something was blocking their descent. Cables on the roof weren't strong enough to hold them. Even the slightest vibrations from the inside could push them into free fall. The cage was 2,000 feet above the bottom. That's the height of two Eiffel Towers, and there was nothing that could stop them from the plunge. Mario shouldered Rassi aside and used force to open Marianne's door. Mario was strong and resourceful. He lost his father when he was only 12, and he had to learn how to survive and take care of 10 brothers and sisters, and himself. Over his teenage years, he often went hunting with his Bushman friends, using only a homemade bow and arrows. Later, Mario became a physical trainer, dedicated to amateur boxing. Not long after that, he met Connie, a Belgian lady, and his future wife. All Mario ever wanted was to get a few acres of land where he could live with Connie and their two sons. He started saving for his dream life right after getting a job in the mine. And look at him now, standing and staring through open elevator doors, there was a terrifying five-foot abyss between Marianne and the concrete wall in front of them. To his left, he saw some empty space with a line of six adjoining shafts. They were used by other elevators. Miners were lucky that the elevator stopped on the exact level with a horizontal reinforcement beam and ledge where a person could stand. Still, there was this dark, scary shaft they needed to cross. Mario stepped outside. About halfway around the elevator, he kicked rubble over the edge. Silence. No sound of hitting the bottom. He saw vertical pipes on the outside of the beam. The shaft seemed bottomless, but it was ringed with sets of crossbeams at every 10 feet. At every 200 feet, there was a platform with a lit tunnel leading into a mine. But it was night. Nobody was there to help, so the miners were on their own. Suddenly, everything started to tremble. It sounded like a distant train. Something was getting closer, and whatever it was, it grew louder and louder. Mario then realized cage number six that carried large amounts of gravel for mixing cement was falling down the shaft. Chances were it would catch the loops of the cable from their elevator's roof and drag Marianne down. Mario was terrified, but there was no time to panic. He looked around again. Around 30 feet below the elevator, there was the station for level 37. That meant they were 3,700 feet beneath the surface. There's a telephone and emergency button. Someone can help us. Thoughts were running through Mario's head. But how to get there? What about those vertical pipes? They were a little too bulky to grip, but there was a thinner galvanized steel water pipe. He grasped it, took a deep breath, and went down. The pipe suddenly began to bend away from the wall. Mario was terrified, but pretty soon, he let himself drop to the spot where the pipe was more secure. Finally, he hit the spot, but there were still five more feet between him and the telephone. He jumped and grabbed a gutter pipe on the other <gasps> side. He did it, he hauled himself forward. He heard miners shouting. Cage six was getting closer. Quick, the alarm, right there in the red box. Mario smashed the glass with his fist and pushed the button. He took the telephone. He was now talking to the elevator supervisor, telling him not to move anything. Just keep the brakes on, he shouted, and quickly went back to the elevator the same way he went down. His men were both terrified and surprised to see him. It's okay, you can come down, everything is stopped, he said, but they were still frozen with fear. He took the sandwich bag and asked men to follow him while going down the pipe once again. Then he stopped. The elevator's vertical guide rails were twisted. 
Oh no, they all depended on barely a couple of screws and just an inch of thin, unstable metal. From that moment on, it was risky even to breathe. Men were still too afraid to move, so Mario took one of the smaller miners and pushed him towards the pipe. It's an emergency. Everyone needs to leave as soon as possible. He pulled the man off the ledge. He was terrified, but after they almost fell, he grabbed the pipes. When they landed down, Mario had to think of how to cross the abyss. The miner was too scared to jump, so Mario grabbed him, shouting out instructions to his men. Let go of the pipe! When they swung across the gap, Mario threw the miner on the platform. At the same time, he used the momentum to fling himself and go back for the rest of the guys. His hands were dusty and in pain, but they had to move on. The next miner was a bit heavier, so Mario needed to think of a new way to get him to the safe side. A barroom trick. He would put heels on one chair and shoulders on another and tense his body into a bridge. People were standing on his belly then, and that would often win him some small prizes. Well, not so fun this time. Plus, instead of chairs, there's an infinite abyss below them. But they have to go for it. There's no other option. He spread over the shaft and literally became a human bridge. The miner didn't want to cross at first, but that was no place nor time to think too much. He made two insecure steps, then rushed over Mario. There were two people on the safe side. When others saw this barroom thing working out, it was easier for them to go for it. One by one, they were coming down and crossing their friend's incredibly strong body to get to the safe side. After a while, 13 of them were safe. Mario climbed 16 times up and down, and he was running out of strength. His arms were in pain and shaking. He closed his eyes and wanted to stop and catch his breath, but his men needed him. He gathered the last of his willpower and climbed a couple more times to help the others cross. Rassi was the last one. He was terrified, but he still forced himself to step on Mario's shoulders. They were coming down, and suddenly Mario slipped for the first time that night. Oh no! His grip slackened, but luckily his boots struck the crossbeam, and they went down safely. Rassi was looking at Mario making the bridge of his body for the last time that night. He firmly went straight while other miners were waiting. They pulled him and Mario to the ground and started crying and shouting. They survived! The nightmare was over. Thanks to Mario, they did the impossible. And Mario was in agony. When he broke the red box to reach the alarm button, he broke a bone in his hand. But because of everything, there was no time to even think of the pain. He somehow picked up the phone once again and told the supervisor they were safe. Engineers and mine managers were on their way to help them. It seemed like Marianne had stopped weeks ago, but the whole ordeal took just shy of two hours. It was a nightmarish experience. The worst scenarios were still in front of his eyes, but they were finally safe now. Mario took his sandwich bag and pulled out the thermos. Some tea, guys? 